Good evening and welcome. Please rise for our processional carol, O Come All Ye Faithful. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord has brought us to his Christmas Eve to hear once more the message of the angels and in heart and mind to go even to Bethlehem and see this thing which has happened, even the babe in the manger. Let us hear again from Holy Scripture, God's loving purposes, from the first days of our sin to the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. And let us fill the world with our carols of praise. But first, because this of all things would rejoice his heart. Let us pray to him for the needs of the whole world and all his people. For peace upon the earth he came to save. For love and unity in the church he has built. For kindness and generosity throughout all humanity. And particularly at this time, let us remember before him the poor, the cold, the hungry and oppressed, the sick and those who mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the elderly and the little children, all those who don't know the Lord Jesus, or who don't love him, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Finally, let us remember before him those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no man can number, which, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in this Lord Jesus we forevermore are one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Almighty God bless us with his grace. Christ give us the joys of everlasting life and under the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of angels bring us all. Amen. Sing we now rejoice, now raise to heaven our voice. He from whom joy streameth, who in a manger lies, not so brightly beameth the sun in yonder skies. Thou, my Savior, art, thou, my Savior, art.
first lesson, God tells sinful Adam that he has lost the life of paradise, but that the seed of the woman will bruise the serpent's head and end his evil rule. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock, and above all the beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. For you are dust, and to dust you shall return. second lesson, 700 years before his birth, the prophet Isaiah reveals he will be born of a virgin. The seed of the woman is brought into greater clarity, for he will be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Cast out our sin and enter 
In the third lesson, 700 years before his birth, the prophet Micah reveals the place where the promised Christ will be born. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up, until the time when she who was in labor has given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. They shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace. fourth lesson, 700 years before his birth, the prophet Isaiah announces the kingdom of peace the coming Savior will bring. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore.
In the fifth lesson, the seed of the woman is brought into final clarity as the Virgin Mary is told she will bear God's son. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel left her. sixth lesson, the historian St. Luke tells of the birth of Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he is of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Jesus looked 
In the seventh lesson, the shepherds go to the manger. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from his Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to Christmas Eve, the most precious night of the year. It's a night loaded with memories and emotions, a night brimming with attention and affection, a night that is literally pregnant with hopes and expectations. And it's an incredible thought to know that all our build-up, all our hopes and fears and expectations of this night, the ones we're carrying with us right now, they all go back to that first Christmas night. It was all in there, waiting to grow out of that seed carried in Mary's womb. Every strong emotion, every meaningful tug of the, in the heart that you'll experience this night was there in that baby, 
or as we sang in the little town of Bethlehem, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. We're having a hard time with expectations today. Things are never what we expect them to be anymore. Even when something is good, it doesn't live up to our expectations, which is why we need this night. We need Christmas. We need to go back to that seed and remember that our Father above doesn't give us his gifts in ways we'd expect. In fact, it would seem he takes pleasure to give in ways we don't expect. Just look at Mary, that poor young girl. She must have been absolutely whirling after that visit from the angel Gabriel. Suddenly, she was expecting, and not just any baby, God's son, one who would be born a king in a kingdom that will not end. Oh, she believed it. She trusted the word of the, of, of, from the angel. But what did she expect? What kind of birth did she envision for this holy child being born into the world? Was it a royal welcome in Jerusalem? Capital city, temple and palace, with all of Israel in attendance, praising and celebrating, trumpets and official announcements to the court, greetings and gifts from foreign kingdoms, riches, fanfare, only the best that Israel had to offer. You would think that would be the bare minimum. But our Father above gives in unexpected ways. No matter what Mary expected, Christmas was going to be very different. The same was true of her pregnancy. There was no time to consider how her family would respond to her suddenly having a baby, much less her fiancé, Joseph. But first things first, God had chosen her. He would take care of the rest. That's how faith works, right? Nothing could have prepared Mary for the change he would cause in her life. She had to live it. Let the Lord take her through it by faith. For our Father above gives in unexpected ways. And the truth is we don't really know what we need until he's given it to us. Mary was forced into hiding. Can you imagine what you would think would be the good news to share with all the world, God's joining us down here to save us, had to be hidden, kept secret. No celebrating with friends and family. She ran off to cousin Elizabeth's in the hill country. Had almost everyone she loved doubt her. Is this the plan? Really? Isolated. Distant. Alone? But how could she ever be alone with the one who was there in her? Could she forget? Could there be a day that passed even an hour, that she didn't place her hand on her belly and wonder. Your father above gives in unexpected ways. He doesn't give what the world expects, but what the world needs. The kind of gift the world needs. The kind of king the world needs. The kind of certainty the world needs. And the incredible thing about Christmas is that it is in the unexpected way he gives that our Father truly reveals what we need. Mary and Joseph didn't get what every new family hopes for. You know, a steady, uneventful delivery. No. Caesar Augustus issued a census, and they found themselves traveling away from home and unsettled, just terrible timing. Why? Because you don't need to know God's with you when everything's going well. You need to know he's with you when things are falling apart, when the great big system that you're a part of is broken and just trying to hold things together. Census? <laughs> it doesn't matter how you count Jesus. He's not going to fit. 
because you don't need another king like all the kingdoms of the world. You need the exception. You need the kingdom that is not from this world, that is not broken, but is willing to join us in our brokenness in order to save us from it. Mary and Joseph were not invited to Bethlehem, you know, for a nice family visit or something. They weren't even welcomed into the house. They were a hassle, a problem. Why? Because you don't need a Savior born into a perfect family. You need a Savior who is born into all the sorrow and the pain and the division and the problems and shortcomings that are in your family and in every family. You need to know that even though his family has no room for him at his birth, he has room for you at his manger's side. That even though he gets no welcome, you are invited to find him, not in his palace, but in his barn. Not surrounded by teams of doctors and nurses and midwives, but surrounded by animals in the least and lowest of places, an utterly embarrassing place to be born. Honestly, it's downright shameful. A story you would try not to tell people if it happened to you today. And yet this is really the deliberate plan and purpose of God Almighty. It seems like God didn't prepare for his own coming. He didn't make it comfortable. He didn't make it easy. It's almost like he wasn't ready. Because this can't possibly be the plan, can it? This is no one's plan let alone the grand master plan of salvation designed before the creation of the world. But our Heavenly Father doesn't give his gifts in the way we'd expect. He chooses in grace to give in ways we don't expect so that we cannot deny that he is the one doing the giving. And this is the beating heart of Christmas. He didn't send an angel to save us. Now he came down himself because you don't need a God that is way up in heaven while you struggle here on earth. You need a God who shares your every weakness, who comes and unites himself to your every shortcoming, who is for you what you need him to be, a savior who can bleed and cry out and die for you in your place. And so he gave no thought to what he might like his birth to be, but entered here only for you and for me, yes, for all, that we might actually have and receive him, not just powerful and terrifying, but vulnerable and helpless, gentle and lowly, merciful and mild. No, <laughs> he didn't get a royal welcome in Jerusalem but from a wind-blown, sheep-scented, random group of shepherds. There was no announcement made to all the important people. You know, all the people whose names you might remember. But the crusty-eyed, half-sleeping nobodies out in the field. Because you don't need a king that rubs elbows with all the bigwigs. You need a king who loves you. Who you can touch. Who you can hold. Who will do everything, even be born for you. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord, and this will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. No. Our Father above doesn't give us his gifts in ways we'd expect. And so it doesn't matter if this is the first time you're hearing this message or if you heard it long ago and the straw bed in your heart has gone cold or even if you kneel at his manger's side often. Tonight he invites you to open wide your heart and let him gently and meekly be laid down there. No, I know. He's not what we expect but he's exactly what you need. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen.
May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. This is your opportunity to pause it and to run and scurry, find yourself a candle. It's time for us to light our candles, to stand and to sing Silent Night. May he who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly fill you with the sweetness of inward peace and goodwill and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Sing and heaven and nature sing and heaven.